first thing I'm going to do is look at life expectancy. Uh, you can see this runs from 1900 to 2020s. The, if you're an Australian born between 2018 and 2020, you're going to live on average 81.2 years, and this is high up on the life expectancy of the world. Uh, a girl, uh, it'll be 85.3 uh, years. And this also is high up on the world's spectrum of life expectancy. Uh, and America's about five years less. England is considerably less. But if you look at the graph over the last 50 years we've got on the screen, you can see it comes up from around about 50 at the turn of the century or the last century and it's progressively gone upwards and there's been a little shift of difference to between male and female and there's also a little glitch and I contributed to that glitch and many of you may have been because that was when smoking was given up, up it came again. As after the First World War and between the wars, more and more people took up smoking and you can see that uh, there was a drop-off in men as if they ran horizontal for a while and then suddenly burst up again. Uh, that was our five-day plans were a major part of that recovery, but also the College of Surgeons uh, in America were the real reason, who did a massive study and showed that cancer has been caused by smoking. I want to read a little thing from the, uh, the American Medical Journal. Older people tend to be healthier nowadays, as we know, saw that graph. Research has shown that the, uh, the healthful behaviour uh, helps you to stay active, healthy into your 60s and 70s. Written by, by an American, not by an Australian. We would say 70s and 80s here and, be, and beyond. In fact, long-term studies of, note, Seventh-day Adventists, a religious group with a generally healthy lifestyle show that they tend to remain healthier into old age. That's us, folks. Their life expectancy is nearly 10 years longer, on average, than most Americans. Now, remember, this is coming from the medical journal. The Adventist age-enhancing behaviours include regular exercise, I hope we're having it here. A vegetarian diet. I know not completely, but I recommend it heavily. Avoiding tobacco and alcohol and maintaining a healthy weight. And the alcohol part today, what I'd like to make an em emphasis. Now, where we had the College of Surgeons back with smoking, um, this time, this massive study was done costing hundreds of millions or possibly even billions. The whole world had its many countries looked at to see the effect. And he gave a very complex answer. If you look at the graph on the screen, the yellows are those less than 20% of people drink alcohol, Muslim countries. The green is 20 to 40%. See there's a bit of green? They're too poor to buy the stuff. The light blue is 40 to 60 per cent. The medium blue is 60 to 80 per cent. And the notable thing there that the United States of America and Russia are both at that level. Mm -hmm. I thought that the Russia was a massive drinker. Dark blue is over 80 per cent and that's where Australia is. Can you see it? Down there, the dark blue. We are amongst the highest drinkers. But what he did was put a very complex... Uh, Bill Gates, by the way, is the one, when I said he. Hmm? Bill Gates did this. He spent hundreds of millions of dollars. It's been the biggest lifestyle study ever in hu for hum human beings. And, uh, of course, uh, there's many started since that. And what he did is he had these horrible-looking graphs. Multiple colours. Each colour represents a disease that he found was caused by alcohol. The height or the thickness of each colour is uh, how many life years are lost because of alcohol from that disease. The cross one is the various age groups. And the top left graph was the average of all males that he tested through the whole world. The next graph is us. 
the high socioeconomic ones. And you notice there was a little bit below. But the little bit below is nothing compared with the big bit above. The little bit below is the benefit they found alcohol was causing. And this was made great emphasis historically, that this is um, where, well, doing you good. But then you look at what's doing you bad in the opposite direction. The second one is alcohol. Then it's more and more poverty to the full right bottom one is the most poverty-stricken country. And the blue at the top, which dominates it, is tuberculosis. Now, there's no tuberculosis in the second top one, or the middle top one, that's us. We don't get the disease anymore. But all those other diseases are taking off life years between the two. Right, the, 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 um, England came out with a, uh, a, a, a little contribution. And if you look at the English one, there are little circles, and the circles get bigger and smaller. Now, I can hardly read them here, uh, and uh, I haven't got the actual... Oh, here we are. The top one is mouth and upper throat. Next little one is larynx. When I was training to be an ear, nose and throat surgeon, working and taking people's larynxes out for cancer, the, our um, uh, surgeon is saying, ah, this has been caused by smoking. This is after the College of Surgeons. But I said every one of these, when I did the, the workup for them, they're all drinking alcohol. Which is it, smoke or alcohol? Oh, no, it's not alcohol, it's smoking. They all drank, didn't they? Now they know that it is both smoking and drinking alcohol causes cancer of the larynx. Then esophagus, then the tiny little one is... Uh, liver. Now, uh, Darren Hinch known here? Melbourne, everyone knows Darren Hinch. He was a federal politician. He drank himself to liver failure and cancer of his liver. They took his liver out and they put another person's liver in. you think he'd be grateful he went back straight back to drinking again. All right, and the big one at the bottom is bowel. Oh, no, uh, I didn't make the, the, the third one up, is breast. Totally unknown up to this point in time that alcohol is a major cause of breast cancer. And when all these results came out, our uh, anti-cancer organisations had made the most superb anti-alcohol ads you can imagine. And they were going to play them over the media. Have you seen any of them? Yes, you have. You've seen two. One is against breast cancer. You may see one of them a year. And the other one is for if you think, even think of getting pregnant, don't drink because it damages the fetus. You've seen that one. Isn't it interesting? Both directed at females and uh, the main thrust is at the infant where the highest feelings are because, and we know the reason, in the last election to every political party, the alcohol industry donated to the party, to individuals, 50% more than they've ever donated before because of this finding. And I will guarantee even more went under the table in brown envelopes. And, our, and the whole of the, the Anti-Cancer Council just stopped putting them there. They have them all ready to run but there's enough money coming in, maybe under the table as well as over the table, uh, to stop these ads which you have occasionally seen. Now I will list some of the cancers. I don't know if you can read them. If I read them all, it might take too long. But you can list, it goes on and on and on of all the cancers produced by alcohol, now known to be produced by alcohol. You know, bladder, brain, breast... Uh, cervical, colorectal, and the, I put in la bright type th those big ones like mouth, pharynx, larynx, esophagus, etc. Even leukaemia goes up, multiple myeloma goes up. You can hardly name a cancer that doesn't go up by drinking alcohol. Then there's a list of diseases not cancer that are caused by alcohol. Right, heart disease, various types, high, high blood pressure. One glass of alcohol lifts your blood pressure. 
all right? There is no safe limit of alcohol. At one, uh, uh, Bill Gates showed, at one, you've got a lift in the level of alcohol, of, of disease. But one particular one is high blood pressure. Even dementia, of course, is more common. And cognitive decline, which we unfortunately, how ages of this room are unfortunately suffering from. And down the bottom of that list is tuberculosis, which we don't have in this country, but is the main killer in third world countries from drinking alcohol. And there's short term things. Uh, uh, I, did I miss that last one? Anyhow, I got her out of sync. Too bad. That's the long term caused by alcohol. Seems to be out of order. Oh, yes, the long term uh, conditions that aren't cancer. And then we, the last one is short term. These things are things like car accidents. Yeah, I think that's the one there. At car accidents and uh, broken hips because you fall over, etc. As you can see, there is a very extensive list. And the last one I've done is the effect on pregnancy. Premature babies go up. Babies are born lighter. They have, there's a delay in their communication. They have poor motor function. <coughs> and behavioural problems are increased by babies that are born to mothers who are drinking alcohol. And I, I would go one further and say it, in the lactation period, the alcohol goes through to the baby and will be doing effects. I was speaking and as a medical uh, new graduate to our friend of ours who happened to become governor of Victoria and his wife was saying, I found a great way to get my baby to sleep. I have a drink of alcohol and then breastfeed the baby. And my worry is they're reducing the... Um, the you have NAPLAN scores in New South Wales? I think that the reason why NAPLANs are falling is because of the mother's drinking. An interesting, over 50s... Oh, this one's in order... If the cancers that are produced by alcohol need prolonged exposure. Most of them occur over the age of 50. 18.9% of all male cancer deaths are from alcohol. Hear it? Just, uh, just under a quarter all right, of all male deaths are caused by alcohol. 27% of all female cancers, deaths, are caused by alcohol. Getting up to nearly a third of all female cancer deaths are currently caused by alcohol. Now, we were horrified with the effect of smoking. No different with alcohol. The same motivation should be in our community against alcohol. And at this moment, how much more time do I have? Is that clock there telling me I have 11 minutes 46 that I've been talking? <laughs> All right. Is, in, can I keep... Now, if I'm going to finish in 15 now, I'll keep going. Important question I've got to answer. Why does alcohol give people such pleasure? Yeah? I was asked that question out in the foyer, wasn't I? Who, where he is? Why does it give so much pleasure? Um, all right, because of addiction. Let's think, there's two ways I can look at addiction. One is, if when you don't drink, you have a desire to drink. And when you drink, you get a, a burst of pleasure when you drink. Well, actual fact, nearly every drinker gets that. And if you define it that way, it is nearly every drinker. But if you say addiction is causing physiological, psychological and pathological damage. That is 10% of all people who drink alcohol in this country are addicted by that definition. I'm going to start an airline, Don McMahon Airline. I can guarantee that 90% of my planes are going to make it through. 10% <laughs> of crash, I'm terribly sorry. Who will go in my airline? 
No one will. This is taking your first drink of alcohol. Exactly the same as stepping into the Don McMahon airline. 10% are destroyed by it. And the others, of course, have a premature death by it rather than total destruction of alcoholism. Well, why is it so pleasurable? Well, deep in your brain, there is a thing we now call the pleasure centre. All pleasures work through that centre. And it's done by dopamine, is the chemical that transmits in that centre. So anyone who drinks alcohol or any other addictive drug secretes dopamine and it gives you a massive feeling of pleasure. And of course, uh, we all have dopamine for all the good things in life. If you have good friends, joy going to Sabbath school, you get dopamine because you enjoy it. Find a new partner, dopamine is secreted. You want to speak that person again. It's all driven through dopamine. And all addictive drugs work through dopamine. They replace it. And if it replaces it after a while, you stop producing dopamine. And so with a, in, in a point comes where without the addictive drug or behaviour, you, you feel absolutely flat and horrible. And you take a little bit of the drug or behaviour, oh, you feel wonderful again. That is what addiction is all about. Now, all drugs of addiction have other side effects that do damage. Yes, they give you pleasure. Have you seen with alcohol? The list of diseases now we know are caused by alcohol. And uh, all these drugs do some other things. And even behavioural th uh, dopamine that does other things. Like opioids are marvellous for giving leaving pain, but they're addictive as well on dopamine and they have all the side effects of we do of the opioids. I'm going to say even caffeine is addictive. I'm sorry for those here, which most probably is the biggest majority. Caffeine is addictive. Of course, water is addictive. Do you know that? Yeah. If I was out in the Simpson Desert and my vehicle broke down and I would be spreading my water out very carefully, wouldn't I? And when it's all gone, what will I be doing? The whole of my life would be looking for water. Now, alcohol's the same. If you put, withdraw your alcohol, the whole of your life gets orientated to satisfy that need you have in your brain for dopamine. There's a problem with alcohol. It progressively knocks part of your brain out. Yes, the first is pleasure. But it uh, starts knocking out other parts of your brain. The prefrontal cortex is the next to go. That's where your moral code is and your decision making of what's right and what's wrong. Like your decision to only have one glass of alcohol and you knock out the prefrontal cortex and you can't keep stop drinking. You lose that desire. Then the cerebellum goes and you get unsteady, all right. Then the hippocampus goes, your memory goes, and finally you stop breathing. I've pe people in the front pointing out that I've spoken my, over my time, but that clock up there is only saying 11 minutes 51. <laughs> it, it's still, yeah. Could I have a little more? All right, sorry about that. Now, this information I've given you today, let's get through that, I didn't give you that. That's still addiction, sorry. Hey, 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 I pulled the addiction ones out on my final one. Sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't have, I left them out because I thought I wouldn't do it. Sorry, they're all my addiction ones. Source of information, where did it come from? It doesn't come from Don McMahon, nor from the SDA church. It's not from Ellen White, and yet she condemns it, but the information against it. No, it comes from Bill Gates, the Australian Medical Association, American Medical Association, the Cancer Council, or any authority 
of, at this moment on this earth whose interest is alcohol will confirm everything I've told you today. And yet the community is doing nothing about it. And uh, I want to have a little final thing. I, I must do this, I'm sorry. Scripture has some slight conflicts on alcohol. Basically, it condemns drunkenness. But there is a couple of texts which are difficult to explain. Uh, drunkenness, I, I can go down there and skip that. There's texts condemning drunkenness, you know. But I'm not sure where we're up there. I'll, I'll read a couple of texts. On this mountain, this is Isaiah 25, 6. On this mountain, the Lord of, uh, God, Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all people, banqueting of on aged wine, not on grape juice, the best of meats and the finest of wines. How do we cope with that? Ecclesiastes 9. Go eat your food with gladness and drink your wine with a joyful heart. All right. Uh, it appears that um, your wine is going to give you a, a pleasure hit. Luke 5.39. And no one after drinking old wine wants new for they say the old is better, and that was Christ talking. And that worries me a lot until I take into consideration the culture. The culture at the time is they couldn't produce alcohol any higher than 2.5%, as told me by Andrews University. That is red wine. Current red wine is 13.5. You've got to drink about five times as much now to get the same, uh, then, to get the same effect as now. All right, it was massively more needed. But they weren't a society that could produce fruit and vegetables all the year round. They weren't a society that can transfer fruit and vegetables from one side of the world to the other. I was at Mildura in Victoria with an Adventist family picking grapes. They were being frozen, put in nitrogen atmosphere, put in a crate, taken to Adelaide, put on the Gans line, up to Darwin, onto a ship, into Indonesia, and in the market in Indonesia, still fresh grapes. They could not move food any faster than a camel or a very slow sailing ship. Therefore, therefore, there's large parts of the season when they lacked phytochemicals. And there's low alcohol level, still preserves the phytochemicals, and which is the best? Nutrition or level of alcohol, which is at a point where it's reasonably hard to be fully addicted at. Speaking to a, a, my son-in-law's father, who was on the island of Lustafor in the middle of the Adriatic, prior to the West uh, or the world bringing in stuff by ship, quickly they had to grow all their own food, their own wine, and there were no alcoholics apparent on the island. But the instant that the high alcohol drinks came in from outside, it's filled now with alcoholics. And I believe the scriptural texts that appear to be a little soft on alcohol are no different than the texts that say, spare the rod and spoil the child. Or no different than the texts that say, how you treat your slave. And it's all culturally orientated and in today's lesson.